Well, we begin today with breaking news. A massive explosion in Beirut today killed at least 10 people and injured hundreds more. You're looking at video. You've seen a number of videos like this circulating on social media. Now, that explosion shattered windows miles away. A state-run news agency says it happened in a warehouse storing explosives. Now, another expert there says chemicals were also stored in that building. But, boy, you can look and just see by the video the devastation there in Lebanon. The situation is still unfolding right now. The cause of that explosion remains under investigation. Well, thanks so much for being with us here on Krem 2 News at noon. I'm Jen York. Laura Papetti is on vacation. Here closer to home, we do want to take a live look outside here at the noon hour. It's sunny, it's hot, of course. We're at the beginning of August, but hey, there's a cool down on the way if the heat is just too much to take. We're going to send things out to Evan Arani at the Outdoor Weather Center. Evan, how hot are we going to get today? Today we're talking upper 80s and low 90s. Our goal for this afternoon in Spokane is 90 degrees flat. So if we get there, that will be about a few degrees warmer than average for this time of year. Early this morning, we saw those clouds really clear out and allowed for a lot of overnight cooling. I mean, we woke up to much cooler temperatures this morning than yesterday. But now, as we head toward your afternoon, we're actually Actually warming up more significantly than where we've seen a lot of your afternoon highs, at least for your afternoon highs yesterday. So we're two degrees warmer almost across the board right now than where we were 24 hours ago at this time yesterday, four degrees warmer in Pullman. Now taking a look outside, beautiful. Can't ask for really a better live look. Now uh, conditions out there are going to stay dry. They're going to stay mild all the way through the day today. We're already, look at that, at 81 degrees in Spokane. Hoping again for 90 as that afternoon high. Winds are calm. That is key in that over the next several days we're going to see a change as uh, Thursday comes around. We'll have a cold front pass through that cold front is going to be bringing wind. It's going to be bringing some clouds and even the possibility of some showers and thunderstorms. But I'd say enjoy the summer like weather while we can, right? We've got temperatures warming up again, upper 80s and low 90s, cooling down to the 60s by overnight. Uh, in just a few minutes, we'll be looking at that extended forecast and talking about the lasting impacts of that cold front that's going to come through on Thursday. Some of those impacts could involve afternoon highs just settling in the upper 70s as opposed to the 90s or triple digits that we've been accustomed to for the last week or so. So in just a few minutes, we'll run through that for you and uh, talk about how Future Tracker looks over the coming days. Jen. All right, Evan, thank you so much. Well, today is the primary election here in Washington, and here's a look at some of today's key races. Starting with this, Governor Jay Inslee is running for re-election. If elected, he would be the second person since Washington became a state to serve three terms as governor. There are more than 30 candidates running against him. And nearly one dozen candidates lined up to take Lieutenant Governor Cyrus Habib's seat. He is not running for re-election. The higher profile candidates include former U.S. Representative Denny Heck and State Senate Floor Majority Leader Marco Leas, both Democrats. On the Republican side, Attorney Ann Davison Sattler, former State Legislator Dick Murray, and former Pierce County Republican Party Chair Marty McClendon. The Attorney General is the highest judicial officer in the state of Washington, will carry out legal action on behalf of the state. That office is currently held by incumbent Democrat Bob Ferguson. He's held that office for eight years. Ferguson drew three Republican challengers, including attorneys Matt Larkin, Mike Vasca, and Brett Rogers. For a full list of those candidates and a closer look at those races, you can text VOTE by 509-448-2000. Again, those ballots must be postmarked today or be in a ballot drop box by 8 p.m. to be counted. In other news today, Dr. Mary Cullinan is stepping down as president of Eastern Washington University. Now, she made that announcement this morning during an emergency meeting that is effective immediately. In June, the school's faculty senate gave her a no-confidence vote. The senate president says it came after the university failed to address concerns with the president's leadership, including financial issues. Dr. David May is the interim president. He will serve in the role for the next two years. Cullinan will serve as a special assistant to the president until mid-September. Well, this week, several local school districts announced plans to go virtual for the beginning of the school year. And this applies to Spokane Public Schools, the Central Valley School District, and Cheney Public Schools. Now, Spokane County's health officer, Dr. Bob Lutz, strongly, strongly rather recommends all schools start the year with remote learning. This is based on rising local coronavirus cases. 
He adds schools can consider in-person learning for students, though, living with special needs. And Dr. Lutz says Spokane County reported 432 COVID-19 cases prior to Memorial Day weekend. That compared to more than 3,800 cases at the end of July. Dr. Lutz says in-person instruction at international schools shows some promise in reducing those numbers. In those areas, school resumed when 25 or fewer cases emerged for every 100,000 people in a two-week span. Right now, Spokane County is seeing more than 206 cases for every 100,000 residents in that same time frame. And so I think, you know, if you just look at the absolute incidence rate as one metric, um, we have a long ways to go before we could, based upon international data, uh, have children back in school in person on a regular basis. Dr. Lutz also says the incident rate needs to stay below 75 for two weeks to be considered an actual decrease in new cases. Well, across state line in North Idaho, the Coeur d'Alene School District released its tentative reopening plan for fall. Right now, it's unclear if students will be in classrooms on the first day of school. And last night, the superintendent laid out the five-stage reopening plan to the school board. Now, the plan will be used for the upcoming school year, and the way that students attend school will be picked based on the category of COVID-19 risk to the community. So what you're going to see here on your screen, though, is the risk categories, minimal, moderate, substantial, and critical. Each category will determine the learning model students and teachers will be in. Models range from traditional, blended, or distance learning. Now, during periods of moderate risk, school buildings would be open, but masks would be required. Half of the students would attend school on Monday and Tuesday. Meanwhile, the other half would attend Thursday and Friday. Now, when it comes to health protocol, there will be daily health screenings for employees, volunteers, and visitors. Parents are encouraged to screen students every morning as well before going to school. Students and staff who experience symptoms will be isolated and sent home. And if a person is sick, areas they used will be closed off and cleaned and disinfected for further use. Now, all students and adults will be required to wear a face covering at school again when the district is in moderate or critical risk. Students will be taught about wearing those face coverings, washing their hands, using hand sanitizer, and physical distancing. The district will also consider additional protection for medically vulnerable staff and students, as well as students living with special needs. Now, the board is expected to take a vote on that August 24th. For a list of the other schools who have released their fall reopening plans, you can text the word SCHOOLS to 509-448-2000. By the time they're delivering their baby, we're, we're friends and I'm really excited for what they're about to go through and excited for their birth. Well, today there appears to be a growing interest locally in giving birth at home. Now, we talked to a local midwife. She says the pandemic has expecting mothers searching for ways to give birth away from the hospital. Rebecca Alice normally books only four due dates per month. For almost five and a half years, that's what I've done, except for this year has been very different. Now she's doing up to seven births every month. That's because so many women decided to switch to home births during the pandemic. I've had many third trimester transfers. I've had some people transfer in just weeks before they were going to be delivering. Um, I had one person call and inquire like the day before her due date. For many of these parents to be, doing a home birth took away some worry about the potentially changing COVID policies at hospitals, which is exactly why at 30 weeks pregnant, Kylie Isaacson and her husband made the switch. Oh, it was so great. It was just exactly the birth that I, I envisioned having. Because switching to home birth meant she could have the people she wanted by her side. My mom, um, my best friends, my husband, my midwife, her birth assistant. She said even though a home birth wasn't even on their radar at first, it did work out perfectly in the end. I, uh, as long as my future pregnancies go as well as this one did and I don't have any complications in those, I will always do a home birth. Speaking of future home births, midwife Rebecca says she's definitely noticed more new pregnancies since the stay-at-home orders. There is going to be a boom in December. 
I'm not even kidding. That month I booked seven and I had to turn so many people away. And when you do the math, March is nine months before a December birth. So it sounds like we had a quarantine baby boom. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crumb 2 News.